individual rocks and trees in these areas, but you need to go through three to four different menus to find that same tree or rock every single time you want to place it. Oh, and don't forget this was designed with the Xbox Kinect in mind, so the menu system is absolutely atrocious. Number 11. All the micromanagement has been completely removed too. One of the biggest parts of this type of game is managing every little aspect of cost. I don't think you're listening anymore. What's going on? A good deal turns bad. Capcom Arcade Cabinet For Capcom's 30th anniversary, they released this compilation of their old arcade games. Back in 20-something, I couldn't be bothered to look it up this time. I don't care. A while back, Capcom had a big sale, and this game was listed as $5, but it was half off. So it was only $2.50. You probably thought a collection of 15 Capcom Arcade games? I can't go wrong. And then you instinctively bought it. When you started the game up, you might be thinking, ooh, look at that game. Whoa, what's that game? Aw, oh, yeah, this looks awesome. I'm definitely going to get my money's worth. Good job, me. That's $2.50 well spent. Then you realize most of the games were blackened out. Well, what's going on? You go back to the marketplace and notice there's an all-in-one pack. It supposedly includes all the games, and then you notice that there are several other packs of games to buy, with some being sold individual. Well, you stumbled onto a game that had an odd release schedule and strange pricing structure. That $5 supposed game that you bought? Well, that was only a starter pack, or basically a container or hub by which you could buy and play the other games as they came out. When the game first launched, you only had access to one game, and then you could play a trial version of three other games. Nowadays, it seems like you get full access to the three games from game pack number one, and free trials of three others, but it might be different for you. Without going into more detail, Capcom basically wanted top dollar for this package when it first came out, but now you are most likely to catch it during a sale. So I got that starter pack for $2.50 US, right? And during that sale, they also had the $30 all-in-one pack for half off. I figured $15 US was still a great price. I mean, look at this. The artwork looks great. Look at all these different games. Well, I'm here to tell you that Capcom Arcade Cabinet is a piece of shit. Look, the hardcore gamers will love the classics like Ghost and Goblins, Commando, and Gunsmoke, and that's about it when it comes to classics. These titles have timeless gameplay that still holds up nicely some 30 plus years later. But the other games? 1942 isn't a bad game, but overhead shooters have improved over the decades and gotten much more complex. There are several other games that you may remember the names of, but you probably played the NES versions back in the day, so these aren't going to play the same. You might have memories of playing Section Z, Trojan, Legendary Wings, not to mention Commando, Ghosts and Goblins, and Gunsmoke because Capcom brought them all to the home console. But these are the arcade games. They play differently. And even though they look better and you can give yourself unlimited quarters, if you're expecting them to play more like the NES versions, then you might be disappointed. The rest of the games are going to be unrecognizable for most players. Pirate Ship Higimaru is a Japanese barrel rolling maze game. It kind of has a frantic feeling that might remind you of Bomberman, but then you just might rather play a Bomberman game instead. Avengers? Well, it's obviously not going to be the one you're thinking of. This is from the 1980s arcades. It's an overhead beat-em-up where you punch and kick zombie-like creatures that eat your brains? What the fuck is this? Speed Rumbler is an odd one, but interesting. You drive around, you can get out on foot, shoot people. Uh, but I never played this back in the day, so it doesn't really hold any interest to in me. The presentation is nice, the menus have wonderful graphics and assets from the other games. There's a gallery that has background history on each game, and there's high quality scans. But Capcom Arcade Cabinet is a collection that is purely based on nostalgia. If you don't have a connection to at least some of these games from back in the day, then you're not going to really find much to like. A small handful of worthwhile titles does not justify the price, even if you find it for half off. I spent about $18 to get access to everything, but I regret buying it now. I learned my lesson, 
Even with a trusted name like Capcom, you always need to check out what games they're putting in a collection before you buy. Check back here for a new video every other day until the end of the year. That's right, another entry every other day until December 31st. Is Striker recording all of these live? Who would do that for 21 separate videos? A loser would do that. Not me, a guy with no life. One that's never seen a girl naked. This end screen is taking too long, Striker. Where's my next video? I mean, <laughs> th th thanks for watching.